Today we are going to be making Roland. This is Roland. He's a roly-poly from my book series, Tales of Whimsy. And you get to meet him in the first book, Wish Weaver, and he's also in the second book, The Wayward Wind. So today what we're gonna do is we need to gather our supplies first. We are going to need the little pink markings, which are done with this pink yarn here with the tapestry needle. You're gonna need the embroidery thread. This is six strands, so your normal set of embroidery thread that you buy comes with six strands. So you're gonna need all six for this one. And then this is just black thread that I doubled up. So I tied it at the end with the knot and then it's two strands right there, okay? And that's gonna be used on his mouth to make that shape where he's got that cheeky grin, okay? So other than that, you're gonna need this light gray color. I've used Red Heart Super Saver. Works really well with Amis, uh, making Ami Grimmies. This is light gray. I'm also going to be using Red Heart Super Saver, the color charcoal, so it's that dark gray color. And then, Last, what I've bought is I've gotten these little guys, they're called bonbons. They're by Lion Brand and they come wrapped in these nice little papers, but um, I'm going to be using the black and the white bonbon threads because they're a lot thinner than traditional yarn and I don't want his antenna to be super thick. So I'm gonna use a smaller hook size and I'm also gonna use a thinner thread in order to get a smaller size for these antennas, okay? They're not stuffed, but they do keep their little shape however you want them, which is really nice, all right? You're also gonna need two safety eyes. This is a six millimeter safety eye. You'll also need your stitch marker and a pair of scissors as well. So for this pattern, I've actually used three different size hooks. It's not required, but this is what I felt worked best for this pattern. For the main body, I used the size E, which is a 3.5 millimeter hook. For his antenna, done with the bonbon thread, I used the B size because I wanted the smallest one that I had, and that's two and a quarter millimeters. And then for his little feet down here in the black yarn, that's just standard black yarn, so you will need that as well, but that I did in size D hook, which is 3.25 millimeters, okay? Again, you don't have to do that. It just gave me the size that I wanted. When you make the size of the hook smaller, it makes the piece itself smaller, okay? Because it makes the stitching tighter. So if you want the feet to be a little bigger, just continue on using your E hook. You can do that as well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start out making his little head. This is what it's gonna look like when it's all finished, okay? So we're starting from the bottom and working our way to the top of his head. So go ahead and get your size E hook, your light gray yarn, and your stitch marker, and let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to do a magic ring, and it, we're gonna do six single crochets in a magic ring, that's the round one. So what I like to do is called a double magic ring. I do have videos for how to do these different techniques if I'm going too fast. You can always check those out. And I wrap, I held it with my back two fingers. I'm gonna go around once, twice, three times, okay? I'm gonna go under the first two, over the last one there, and then pull that loop up. You're making a shape of an A. Okay, pinch it with your fingers here to slip your fingers out. You can see the A better there. All right, make sure your working yarn is still in your back fingers. Yarn over, pull through, and that creates the circle that you're gonna work into, okay? You can see there's two rounds. That's why it's called a double magic ring, because so you got the two threads here. All right, now you're gonna go ahead and work your single crochets. So we're going into the center of the circle, making sure you're going around all of those. So see there's one, two, and the tail. Okay, going in, yarning over from the back, pull forward, yarn over, and pull through. That's one. Go in through the circle, yarn over from the back, pull forward, yarn over, and pull through. There's two. Going into the back, yarning over from the back, pulling forward. That's two loops. Yarn over again, pull through. That's three. And then we're gonna do four five, and six. 
Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll see the braid along the outside edge. Looks like little Vs. Okay, now, in order to make it a nice tight circle, we're gonna start to pull gently this tail and see which of those two pulls in first. So it's this one, okay? This one pulls in first. Grab that loop and pull it tight, okay? So that will tighten that center. So now you see that it's tight, but you got your loop here. Now take your tail and pull that one tight, all right? The double magic ring is a technique I like to use because I feel that there's not gonna be any loosening of that center circle. I don't want it to over time loosen, and so that's why I do the double magic ring. All right, so now we've done our first round. We're gonna put our stitch marker on this loop that's around our hook. All right, now we're gonna start round two. Round two is to increase around. So increasing means that you're gonna do two stitches in each of the stitches from the prior round. So we're gonna go in underneath these that braid, okay, now we're under it, you can see it there, yarning over from the back, pulling forward, now we've got two loops, yarning over and pulling through. We're just doing single crochets. Now, we're, since we're increasing, we're going into that same stitch and we're doing another single crochet, okay? So there's two single crochets in each of these stitches around, so now we're going to the next one and we're gonna do two single crochets in that one. Okay, now we're going to the next one and we're gonna do two single crochets in that one. And we're gonna do that all the way around until we get to the end of round two. Okay, so we've gotten all the way around. Now you should have 12 stitches on the outside of your round and you can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, now you're gonna take your stitch marker out, put it on the current loop that's on your hook to start round three. And now you're gonna check your pattern for round three, which is single crochet and then an increase. And that pattern repeated all the way around. Okay, so there's a single crochet in the next one here. And then in the next stitch, you're gonna increase, which means you'll do two single crochets in that same stitch. Okay, now you go back to doing a single crochet. And then you do another increase. So with two single crochets in that one stitch. Now we're gonna do another single crochet and another increase and do that same pattern all the way around for round three. Okay, we've finished round three. You should have 18 stitches around the outside. We're gonna move our stitch marker now to the one that's the working loop on our hook. And we're gonna begin round four. For rounds four and five, we're going to just be single crocheting around. So one single crochet in each stitch around. Your count, your outside count of 18 will not change. You're gonna stay the same, okay? So we're just repeating it. What this is doing is it's gonna start building up the circle part. So when we've done our increases evenly around, we've just been extending the size without actually creating any shape, right? We've had a very two-dimensional flat circle. Now we're going to be building it up so that it becomes more of a sphere. So we're doing one single crochet in each stitch around. Do that for two rounds, okay? So I will meet you back at the end of round five. Okay, so I have gone through round five. As you can see, we're starting to create that spherical shape for his head, okay? Now let's go ahead and move our stitch marker to our working loop here. Okay, now we're gonna do round six. We're gonna do one single crochet and then an invisible decrease and do that pattern all the way around. So now we're going to be making the circle on the other side, closing off the circle, okay? And starting to create that head shape. So we're gonna do one single crochet in the next stitch. Now to do an invisible decrease, what you wanna do is going into the front loop only. So on your V here, you just want this front loop. Okay, now go into the next stitches front loop. All right, so now you've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over from the back, and then you're gonna pull through the first two loops, yarn over and pull through the last two loops, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and going into the next stitch, we're gonna do a single crochet through both loops, just as usual. Now we're doing another invisible decrease, again, through the front loops only. You're gonna go ahead and go around through the front loops of the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through those first two stitches, yarn over and pull through those two stitches, okay? Keep doing this same pattern all the way around 
Let's just do one more invisible decrease together through the front loop only, going into the next one, front loop only, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, okay? Do that same thing around, I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I finished the round, I've moved my stitch marker, as you can see. Next, we need to go ahead and place the safety eyes, all right? So I've got the other Roland's head here, and what you're gonna do, and I'm just gonna show you on this one that's already done, you can see your rounds. So see, there's the magic ring, that was your first round, the next one is the second, then the third, and so forth. What you need to do is you're gonna count up the rows, the, you're gonna go between the rows in those holes that are left between the stitches, okay, in order to place these safety eyes. So we're going one, two, three, four, and five. So we're going between rows four and five to place our safety eyes. So making sure, I always make sure the stitch marker's at the back. This will be the front of my face here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, so there's four and five here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put my first safety eye in, okay? I'm not putting the backs on yet because I wanna make sure I got the placement the way I want it. For the other one, if you look here, if you count these as stitches, there's one, two, three, and you're kinda in the fourth one there. Then you go one, two, three, and then we're over in the fourth one there. So as you can see, the eyes look the same. They look the same distance apart. They've given me enough space to do his little mouth. Okay, now that you've got the eyes where you want them, you need to go ahead and put the backings on. So you're kinda gonna flip it a little bit inside out here. If you look at the backings, they are domed, okay? You want the flat side to be on the base here and have the dome part facing out. All right, so I always get the first click in, and for these ones, it usually clicks about three times. One, one, two, and three. And you just feel that last one, it doesn't really click as much as the other ones do. Okay, now I'm going in for the other one. I'm gonna flip it inside out again, put the flat side down, click once just to hold it in place, and then one, two, three. All right, perfect. Okay, so the safety eyes are now in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the embroidering on the face before we finish off the head and stuff. All right, so first let's go ahead and do his little smile. So you're gonna wanna grab your embroidery threads. Again, I've got two needles here. One is with the double strand here of just regular old black thread and then the other one has my embroidery thread with the six strands so let's grab the one I have here with the six strands all right so I am gonna go on the fourth row so one two three four that's where I want my smile to be okay so you want it to what you're gonna do you put a knot on the end and that will be hidden inside all right, you're gonna go between the fibers. You don't wanna go in one of those holes in between the stitches because the knot will just pull through. So you wanna go in between the fibers and that traps the knot on the inside, okay? So you can see I've got a little bit of a distance here, just a couple of millimeters there. And then I'm gonna do the same. You wanna make sure that you're going in the same distance from each eye on the same row, okay? Now go ahead and pull that down. All right, perfect. I always stick the needle kind of in the back to hold it while I grab my other yarn or my other strand of thread here. Now this is the one that's going to help shape the smile, however you want it shaped. Now I'm gonna go ahead and again, going in between stitches so that it's not going to pull my knot through. Okay. Now go ahead and you're gonna go around the embroidery thread of his smile here and go back into that same spot that your thread is coming out of right now. And that will pull the smile down. Okay. And then I usually go ahead and just do that around a couple of different spots on there just to really secure the smile. 
how I want it. Okay, now I'm gonna set that one in the back. I'm gonna grab the other thread here, the thicker thread, and I'm gonna do just that little mark on the side. It kind of makes him look like he's got like a half grin. All right, so I'm gonna bring it back over here and then just have it come down. It doesn't need to be very long, okay? And there you go, there's his little smile. So as long as you're happy with that, you're gonna go ahead and tie off your two strands of black thread on the inside of your work. So what I like to do is I just grab, I don't go all the way through, just grabbing some of the fibers on the back here. Okay, and then before I pull it through, I'm gonna go back in through that loop and then tie it off. And then do that a couple of times. Doesn't have to be perfect, you just want it to be secure. Okay, that one's done, and then we'll go ahead and do this other one here. All right, so Roland now has his smile. The next thing he needs are his little cheek marks. So you got your pink yarn here. We've got it knotted on the end and I have it on a tapestry needle. Again, you need to come through the fibers. You may need to wiggle it a little bit because of having such a thick needle for this yarn here. You could use pink embroidery thread if you wanted to. That would also work. It's your choice, whatever you have handy, okay? You can see if I pull it, it's not coming out. That means it's nice and secure. Okay, you're just gonna go over, a, not too long. You don't want the cheek marks to be too wide. Just that little, just little tick marks, two of them on either side. Okay, so here's one. And then there's two, okay. Now you're gonna go in on the other side. You could tie this off if you want and then do another one on the other side. I just make sure I don't go too tight with it because the stuffing will also hold it in place on the inside. Okay, so there's one. And two. Now he's got his little cheek marks. We're gonna go ahead and tie the pink off on the inside. Next thing you wanna do is grab some stuffing. You're not gonna to need too much for his little head. You just wanna make sure to work the stuffing around those safety eyes, okay? Because they will try to pull his face different directions because of how thick the backing is. So you just wanna make sure you tuck stuffing underneath and around so that the post just goes straight onto the inside instead of being stuck to one side or the other. Okay, once you've got your stuffing in there, you're gonna use your finger here to hold it in while you are still working your stitches around. For round seven, we're going to invisible decrease around, okay? So again, we're going through the front loops only and you're just going to repeat that same pattern all the way around doing invisible decreases. This is to tie off the top part of the head so that his little sphere can be spherical. Okay, so at this point, I've finished the round. I've taken out my stitch marker because this is the end. You can always try to stuff in a little bit more stuffing now that you've gotten the circle a little bit more closed off. Okay, so I've gotten a little bit more stuffing in there. It's nice and round. I'm gonna go ahead and do a slip stitch in this next stitch here just to tie off my thread. Go ahead and cut it away. And then you're gonna pull that tail through the loop that's left and pull it tight. Now we do have a gap on the top that we need to close. So what you need to do is grab your tapestry needle. That's the nice thick needle with the large eye hole thread it through. Okay, and now what we're gonna do to close is you're gonna go through the front loops only, weaving around. So when they say weave in ends or fasten off, this is fastening off, this is weaving in ends, okay? So, so you're gonna go in through the front loop towards the middle, then from the middle towards the outside, and that's creating that 
weave. Now go into the next one, going in from the outside to the middle, from the middle back to the outside on the next, okay? And again, because you have six stitches here, you'll have to do this three times, all right? And now you pull it gently and that will close that hole up for you, okay? So the, the ending circle looks a little different from your, your magic ring and that's okay. That's what it's supposed to look like. So now I want to go ahead and I usually go in through the middle. I come out somewhere else, okay? He's going to have a cap on, so I'm going to come out through the back because you're not even going to see the back of his head. It's going to be hidden by a cap. And even still, the way you do this so that it's not as noticeable where you tie off is you're just going to pick up a stitch, making sure you get that entire amount of thread on that yarn. You don't want to split the fibers or anything like that, okay? And then create a loop, go through the loop, and then I like to tie it off in a knot. Now lift the knot up so you can see where you need to go in. You're going into that little hole right there, coming out somewhere else, and then as you watch the knot, it gets tucked on into the inside, okay? And that's nice and secure. It's not coming out, it's not going anywhere. You're gonna take your scissors, clip away this strand of yarn and then take your hook and just wiggle it through underneath and that'll pull that end on the inside of your work okay so now we've got his head all finished they're not all gonna look the same you can see his mouth here is a little wider and that's okay you know the beauty of these is that they are unique each every single one that you make is unique I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks guys.